Hi and welcome back to the channel. As mentioned in my race preview, F1 is back in Australia after a two year gap. Since then, of course, the track has been reprofiled in a few corners to promote faster and better racing and of course to enable more opportunities to overtake. Going into this race weekend, they had increased the DRS zones from 2 to 4. I personally stated this was too much DRS in my preview going into this race weekend and just before Saturday morning got underway in Australia, F1 confirmed the reduction of 4 to 3 zones. Before the FP3 session got underway, F1 confirmed to the teams they had removed one zone due to safety reasons. I thought that this should have been done earlier in the weekend as 4 was always going to be too much. As this was a last minute announcement, teams had to adjust their car and setup to accommodate that reduction of 4 to 3. So teams were obviously having to change their setup on how their car was originally set up from Friday to accommodate the reduction of DRS zones. I do agree with the reduction from 4 to 3, but I feel like the timing of the announcement could have been done better. Practice was a handful to say the least. Sebastian Vettel, who starts his campaign for 2022, this race weekend had probably the worst 48 hours in his F1 career. He makes his comeback after having COVID for the first two rounds. In FP1, his car stopped out on track and then caught fire, which he had to put out with the extinguisher. He then decided to wait around the track until the session ended to make his way back to the garage. And how he made his way back to the garage is by taking a steward's moped. He drove the moped himself on the track to get back to the garage. This is of course when the session was over and no cars were out on track. It was very funny and comical to see as he went round and the fans gave claps and he obviously said hi to all the fans. But personally for F1, they did not like this as no one is supposed to be out on track between the FP1 and FP2 sessions. And for this little joyride, he received a 5,000 euro fine. He then missed the whole of FP2 session due to the car not being able to be fixed in time. And when he did get finally out in FP3 on Saturday morning, he crashed out straight away. So not the star he wanted for his 2022 F1 season. To make matters worse, Lance also crashed out in FP3, which meant the team had a hell of a job to get both cars ready for qualifying straight away. Practice as a whole was more of the same from Red Bull and Ferrari at the top. It was Sainz who was fastest in the morning with Charles taking bragging rights in the afternoon in FP2. The Red Bulls were just behind the Ferraris with Max complaining about an imbalance in his car. Turn 3 provided the trickiest with the drivers of this new reprofile track as they got to grips with this new track layout and loads of drivers had been locking up in that corner. McLaren had a better showing over practice as both their drivers were in the top 10. They were in the top 10 throughout all three sessions as well as Lando topping the last session in FP3. He spoke to the media after the race stating that this may be circuit dependent as the team has fixed some of their issues but not all of them. Alpine also looked strong along alongside the McLarens as well as the Mercedes for best of the rest. Mercedes had confirmed they had brought no upgrades to this race weekend and both drivers were still struggling with pole poising up and down the track. I believe teams are not bringing upgrades to these races because of the cost cap. The cost cap means that you can't just, you know, throw money at upgrades and when they don't work, it's obviously money down the drain. So for them, they want to bring a whole heap of upgrades together as one to make sure the money is well used. So I feel like we'll see major upgrades at certain points of the season. This is how the sessions ended. Qualifying just like practice was a bag of incidents. Aston Martin managed to get Stroll's car fixed just in time for him to go out for one time lap after he crashed out at the end of FP3, but unfortunately they couldn't fix Vettel's car in time to make that session. Stroll then went out with two minutes to go to get his lap time in, and as he was going around, Latifi had slowed down to let him pass, but then Latifi tried to re-pass him and they crashed and came together. It was a weird incident as I wasn't sure why Latifi slowed down and then tried to re-pass him. But at the same time, Stroll should be looking at his mirrors just in case something happens. So it was an absolute shit show from both drivers in Q1. The mirrors on F1 cars are really tiny, 
but I'm not trying to give an excuse for Stroll's mistake. But at the same time, Latifi did slow down and then try to repass him. So I personally believe both are equally at fault here. The stewards didn't see it like this and they gave Stroll a three place grid drop for this collision. I swear F1 sees more crashes with paid drivers than any other drivers. Both these drivers are paid drivers and they pay for their seat. And this was Latifi's fourth crash in four races. This brought out the red flag which meant that Aston Martin could fix Vettel's car in time for him to go out for one run. They managed to fix the car just in the nick of time and he got out to do one timed run. Great job by the team to get both cars fixed in time. Vettel came out to do his run but in his eagerness to do his run he was speeding in the pit lane which means he received another fine this time it was only 500 euros unfortunately that one time lap that he tried to do just wasn't enough to get out in q1 of course joining latifi stroll and vettel was magnuson and albon out in q1 not the best from Haas or magnuson but a decent showing since magnuson wasn't feeling well over the weekend he was feeling ill and he missed media duties on friday so still a decent showing and mick managed to get through to q2 at the end of the Q1 session, Albon stopped out on track and had to push his car back to the pits. It was investigated after the race that he didn't have enough fuel for a sample and as such he was subsequently disqualified from qualifying and he started Sunday's race in P20 and last. In Q2, we saw both Alfa Romeos, Alfa Tauris and Mick all out. Weird to see all these teams out as they all made Q3 previously in the last two rounds. So it's weird to see where this pace has gone in Australia. However, we're not sure if it's track specific. This exit by by Alfa Romeo driver Bottas meant that his long and outstanding streak of 103 races in Q3 had now been broken. His long streak ended on Saturday and it continued from his first day in Mercedes. So that's one streak that's not going to be beaten in a long time of consecutive Q3 appearances. Drivers were pushing their car in Q3 and Leclerc set the benchmark time. Sainz was about to complete his lap but unfortunately the red flag came out and he couldn't set a time. The red flag was because of Alonso crashing out. Alonso was on a fast lap and setting quick sector times before his crash. He crashed out and what could have been for that time, it could have been definitely top three. They had strong pace leading up to qualifying and we just couldn't see the end of that lap. He got too deep into the corner and just couldn't bring it back and he crashed into the wall. But he stayed on the radio, it was a hydraulics issue and that's why he crashed. After reviewing the footage you can see that he tried to drop the gears down but unfortunately the car just didn't drop. So of course he was carrying too much speed and then crashed out. So it was an issue with the car rather than the driver. Sad to really see as he was on for a good lap. The session restarted and Leclerc went fastest at the top and the Red Bulls just couldn't challenge him. So he took his second pole of 2022. The Red Bulls just lined up just behind him but it was a horrible day for Sainz who could only qualify P9. He couldn't get a good time in as the first time was stopped by the red flag and the last and only one he did was at the end and he had issues with his steering wheel. So he couldn't warm up the tyres correctly and had to rush to get that one lap time in. This was the picture they took of the top three. I found it funny as it looks like a boy band just like this and edits were made very quick as you can see here. The reason they took pictures like this was because the sun was setting and it was in their eyes so obviously they took pictures like this. This is how they line up for the race on Sunday. Leclerc on pole. Lando doing a great job for P4 followed by the Mercedes. Science in P9 as mentioned as he had a bad session. Stroll and Latifi were at the back with Albon after his penalty for not having enough fuel. Before the race actually got underway, there were a few things to note. Red Bull were trying to frantically fix Max Verstappen's car. He had an issue with the front wing just before lights out. And then Alpine also had an issue firing up Fernando Alonso's car. Both issues were fixed for both drivers and they both made lights out. There were also some new rules going into this race weekend. The first of which is that no jewelry should be worn by drivers in the car. I personally feel this rule is really aimed at Lewis Hamilton as he's probably the only driver to wear jewelry in the car. The rule states that all body piercings and any metal chains can't be worn in the car but it looks like Lewis didn't comply with these rules on race day as he still had his earrings on going into that car. There may be however a grace period but it's not been confirmed yet. No word if it will be looked at by the race directors and if he'll be given a fine but I'll be keeping everyone updated on the latest on this on Twitter. I've left the link for that below. Alongside this rule they also stated that drivers must also wear fireproof underwear. Again all these rules are just for safety measures and just to follow the rule book as the FIA states. But the 
following rule is a brand new rule. This rule is due to the safety car restart rule. The race director made it clear that what Max Verstappen does on a restart is now not allowed. What Max does is he tries to hurry the lead driver to get the race restarted. He goes along the driver, he tries to pressure them and even try to even overtake them as well in the aid to hurry up and put them under pressure. But now this is not allowed as the race director says you have to be behind them and you can't go alongside them. This is what you're not allowed to do and this is what you should be doing. I just find it hilarious that this new rule, the safety car rule and the lap car rules have all been implemented for just Max Verstappen. They're all directed at Max as no one else does this. So it makes you think about how much he got away with in 2021 with Michael Massey. I'm happy these new race directors are taking a firm stance on all the rules and making sure they're followed to the letter. They need to take a strong stance and make sure that rules are followed because they're there for a reason. So it was a great race weekend and race from Charles overall. Another strong showing as he extends his lead at the top of the championship. He managed to do the grand slam of getting pole, fastest lap, led every lap and of course the win and he came home to win his second Grand Prix of 2022. He really looked in command in the race as he wasn't challenged for the win and if I'm personally honest it just looked like a Sunday drive for him as he was never under any attack. The only issue I would say is probably after the safety car restart. He went in too deep in the last corner and Max Verstappen got a run on him but luckily he managed to keep the lead and Max was in second. But yeah apart from that good race good points and got maximum points and he also won by 20 seconds to P2 man in Perez. On the other side of the garage, it wasn't as good. Science had a bad qualifier and an even worse race. I feel like he tried to make up for that bad qualifying in the race and got too trigger happy. He was too keen to pass guys and he spun out and beached his car. He had a bad start and lost places and tried to make up places really quickly. But again, was just too trigger happy and obviously got onto the grass and beached the car. I feel like he needs to take a long hard look at himself and just calm it down. I feel like he feels pressure as Leclerc's doing really well at the top. But for me, he really needs to focus on himself take it calmly and obviously drive the way he's been driving last year and of course get that car set up for him and race for him so yeah a lot of work for his side of the garage to do it was a mixed weekend for Red Bull as Perez got P2 but Max retired Perez lost P3 not once but twice but managed to repass those Mercedes for that position again but again I feel like he was nowhere in comparison to the pace of Leclerc and Max and really looked third best as usual on the other side of the garage Max had issues with his engine as he had to stop out on track as he DNS for the second race out of three so far. Red Bull really have to get to grips with the reliability issues really quickly if they are wanting to mount a challenge for this season. But yeah, Max won't be happy of how his season has started so far. A good day for Mercedes as they maximise points. George managed to get his first podium for the team and Lewis came home in P4. This means that Mercedes stays second in the constructors. However, Hamilton won't be as happy as he lost out to the safety car. He was angry over Team Radio over this all because he was told not to attack George. It's not been confirmed yet but I think it's probably the latter as he was probably told not to attack George for P3 and bring the cars home. George of course did well to take advantage of that safety car and take a cheap stop and of course jumped a few places for that podium position. McLaren also did a great job for a double points finish in P5 and P6. I feel that Ricardo had more pace in the car but the team told him not to attack Norris. But both of the drivers were really in no man's land as they couldn't attack Mercedes and weren't attacked from the back. But the team would take this after a horrible first two rounds. It was also a great race and drive by Alex Albon. He started P20 and managed to finish P10 for one point. Great race and he only put it once right at the end of the race. So yeah, great strategy by him and great driving. And once again outshone his teammate. Towards the end of the race, people were thinking what the penalty could be if he didn't pit. Because as per the rules, you need to use two compound of tyres and he obviously only used one up to that point. But the team knew this and Alex was in P7 showing good pace on that hard tyre from the start. So he managed to eke out a gap in P7 of course and then when he pitted on that last lap he came out in P10. It was a good point for Williams. This is how the race ended. So for me, the, my drivers of the day and the weekend were probably Charles Leclerc and Alex Albon. Charles, of course, because he won the race, got the pole and of course done the Grand Slam and won his second race of the 2022 F1 season. And alongside him is, of course, Albon, who goes from P20 to P10 for the great point that he scored for Williams. Great race from both drivers. I've given Hamilton a 7, a really good race from him as he managed to jump for P3 at the start but he did get burnt by the safety car and I believe the team told him not to attack George. He wasn't happy but it was good points for the team. I've given George an 8 for his first podium for Mercedes. 
he managed to jump a few cards due to that safety car and benefit. And of course, due to Max's retirement, he managed to get P3 and come home for good points. I've given Max a four as he qualified bad and he just wasn't there in terms of pace. All weekend, he's been struggling with balance in that car. And then in a race, he was really nowhere to challenge with Charles. And when he did have a sniff after the restart, he just backed out. He didn't take it and the aggressive Max that we've previously seen just wasn't there. I'm not sure why he's turned into a puppy dog this year, but it's really confusing. But regardless, even if he had passed, he wouldn't have made it to the end of the race as he retired due to that issue with his car. And he DNF for the second race in three races. I've given Perez an eight. Good race for him overall to retake P3 at the time from both Mercedes drivers. He got burnt as well by the safety car, but he retook and repassed on track. And of course, inherited P2 due to Max's retirement. Good race for him overall. I've given Charles a 10 and I had to give him another 10. Did the Grand Slam and obviously a Sunday drive for him for to win his second race of the season. Really a faultless weekend from him. This is the second 10 I've given him after the first race. And I believe I gave him a 9 for Saudi as well. So yeah, he's having a really good season so far. I've given Sainz a 2. Really poor, poor weekend from him. Bad qualifying as he got burnt by the red flag. He started P9 due to a bad qualifying. And then obviously he lost places at the start due to a bad, you know, getaway. And then he tried to make up places really quickly, but then, you know, was too eager, spun out and obviously beached his car. So yeah, a weekend to forget for him as he loses more ground to his teammate. I've given Lando a seven, a good race for him, as I mentioned before, but really in no man's land and couldn't attack the drivers in front, but did well for another points finish. I've also given Daniel a seven as it was a good race for him. He had the pace in the car as I feel like he did, but the team told him not to attack Lando. He did well for his first points finish of the season and obviously his home race as well. I've given Fernando a five. Good qualifying from him and what could have been before that crash but during the race he was at the back mostly and I'm not sure where that pace went on Sunday so yeah really poor for him on that Sunday's race I've given Ocon a six a better day for him as he came home in seventh but again the pace of the car just wasn't there as he really couldn't challenge the Mercedes or challenge Alonso's time that he tried to do in qualifying I've given Lance a two and I'm being generous with that too he had a bad qualifying as he crashed out with Latifi he then got a penalty in the race for weaving and yeah he was really nowhere in terms of the race. I've given Sebastian a zero, probably the worst weekend for him overall in his F1 career. A horror show for him as he crashed out multiple times, got a couple of fines and one to forget in a hurry. Aston Martin are now the only team not to score any points in 2022 so far. So yeah, back to the drawing board for that team. I've given Haas an overall rating of four. The pace of the Haas seems to just disappear this race weekend as Mick and K-Mag were just nowhere and right at the back. So it was a bit confusing where that pace from the first two race weekends were as they qualified and raced out the points. I've given Gasly a 6. He did well from P11 to finish P8, so good points for the team. I've given Sonoda a 2. Wasn't really anywhere during the race and finished last. I've given Bottas a 7. He did well to make up for qualifying in the race as he started P12, but he came home in P8. Good drive from him and obviously good points again. I've given Joe a 6. Another decent race for him as he finishes another Grand Prix. He just missed out on the points due to Albon pitting right at the end and obviously, you know, coming out in front of him. But he did well to come home in P11. I've given Alex Albon a 9. P20 to P10. A great race for him and a good point. Fully deserved and great drive. I've given Latifi a 0. I feel like Latifi is just an F1 to make up the numbers. He's always around the back, always doing crashes and really nowhere on race day and qualifying. He never gets the best out of the car and always outperformed by his teammate. And this is a teammate that just missed F1 for one year as well. So yeah, really a shamble from Nicolas Latifi. This is how the driver's championship looks like. Leclerc extends his lead at the top to Russell in P2. Yes, that's right, Russell in P2. I'm just as shocked as you are. Charles now has more points than P2 and P3 man put together. Really a commanding lead. Verstappen drops to P6 after another DNF. Perez and Norris also move up after a good points finish. This is how the team's championship looks like. Ferrari extend their lead, but Mercedes still in second. That double points finish for McLaren means that they move up to P4. Williams now in P9 with that one point from Albon and Aston Martin still yet to score. F1 now takes another week break before Imola in Italy. And of course, this is the first of three sprint races we will have this season. So it'll be very interesting to see how it works with these new 2022 cars and the go kart style racing that we're getting on TV. Join me as usual for my race preview and review for that race weekend on my YouTube channel and also on my socials. I've linked all my social media in the description below. Make sure you click the subscribe button below for more F1 news, analysis and opinion. If you've liked the video, click the like button below. This will really help the YouTube algorithm.